today we are going to discuss about a new spectroscopic technique that is called infrared spectroscopy. Infrared spectroscopy is uh, part of these uh, the advanced chemical spectroscopic techniques which are used to determine different kinds of chemical information starting from the electronic transition to the vibrational spectroscopy to even the nuclear transitions. So, uh, this normally used in the machines as a Fourier transform in spectroscopy or something known as FTIR. So, FTIR is the uh, is the major Fourier transform technique which is normally used in the experiments and whenever you go to any research labs they will talk about FTIR. The full form of FTIR is Fourier transformed infrared spectroscopy. Basically, it is an infrared spectroscopy, but the informations which are obtained from the machine are basically plotted in this Fourier space instead of the real space and Fourier space is nothing but the wave number space. Now, uh, this is this uh, spectroscopic technique rather infrared spectroscopic techniques it deals with the infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum and I uh, will first give you an idea what is infrared radiation is. Now, as you know infrared radiation is lies between visible and the microwave portions of the electromagnetic spectrum. In the very first class I just showed you the detailed infrared uh, the digital spectrum of the electromagnetic radiation where starting from X rays or gamma rays to radio waves are shown and uh, that UV, UV and visible comes in the middle of the of the spectrum. So, infrared which uh, comes with uh, between the visible and the microwave that is this one here. So, you can see this is the part visible microwave we have already discussed about the UV and the visible spectroscopy in the last class. So, here the wavelength comes uh, basically falls between these two uh, the spectrums. Infrareds uh, normally have higher wavelengths than the visibles as clear wavelengths increases in this direction. So, lambda increase in this direction and the frequency of it decreases as you go from UV to microwave radio. Infraradiations in region are basically divided into three parts. One is uh, mid infrared, that is exactly the infrared radiation region, and then you have a near infrared and the far infrared. Near infrared means the part of the infrared spectrum that is closest to the visible light, and far infrared means the part which is closer to the microwave regions. And mid infrared obviously is between these two or the middle of that. Primary source of this infrared radiation is thermal, which I will discuss in the next slide that is basically heat. Now, this is radiation is produced by the motion of atoms and molecules in an object, higher the temperature more the atoms and molecules move and more the infrared radiation is. So, any objects radiates radiation in the infrared regions even an ice cube actually radiates infrared radiations. So, to give an idea humans at even normal body temperatures radiate more strongly in the infrared region that is why there are cameras developed to get images in the infrared spectrum and these cameras are very popular for the night photography. And uh, you know this uh, most of the human beings at normal body temperature radiate strongly in the infrared region at a wavelength about 10 microns and uh, in the image which is shown here in the left part of this figure. Uh, is the basically the you know the areas which are red and yellow are these highest temperatures regions as you can, can see that. On the other hand this right side picture shows and night picture night image of a cat using infrared radiations. Yellow white areas are the warmest. So, yellow white areas eyes actually are at a very high radiation radiation uh, coming from the eyes and uh, the purple regions are the coldest. So, these kind of imaging techniques are widely used for uh, the photographies of in the night or even sometime in case of uh, the other things. So, I am going to show you the actual values of the infrared uh, radiation so wavelengths and the and the wave numbers. So, wavelengths are false in the region of 2.5 to 17 micron that means they are quite large even in compared to the visible, visible ones are actually I know 400 to 800 nanometers. So, if you multiply this one with nanometers that means, if you multiply with 10 to the power 3. So, it is basically 200 uh, 
50 to 1700 nanometers. So, sorry, 2500 to 17000 nanom nanometers. That's much much higher than the uh, the visible. And so, corresponding wave numbers are basically 4000 to 600 centimeter inverse. These frequencies match frequencies of the covalent bonds, basically in the material or in the molecules rather, stretching and the fiber and the, and the bending vibrations. So, you have a covalent bond like carbon carbon or carbon hydrogen or carbon oxygen covalent bonds, there the uh, these frequencies actually match very well with the stretching and the bending vibration of those bonds. So, therefore, one can determine the kind of bonds present inside a covalent bonded material. This is why it is very widely used for covalent bond molecules. So, infrared radiations or infrared spectroscopy is normally used to tell you what type of bonds are present in the material and also some type of other structural informations which we will show you as we go along. So, to give you an idea why does it lie as I said you this lies between visible and the microwave the frequencies actually falls in the region of 10 to the power 14 to the power 12 hertz and wavelengths are about 10 to the power 4 to 10 to the power 6 or other 10 to the power 3 to 10 to the power 5 nanometers that is what we have seen. And uh, so therefore, they talks about the molecular vibrations and these are indicate can be studied. We have already discussed about UV visible which can be used for valence electronic transitions and so IR is basically a complementary technique as compared to the UV visible. Now, to give an better perspectives of this, infrared spectroscopic process actually deals with quantum mechanical energy levels which are similar to the molecular vibrations. So, I do not have time rather to go into the quantum mechanical treatment of the molecular structure. I hope you have already studied in your different courses like physics of metals or maybe uh, some other quantum mechanical courses. So, uh, I understand that uh, these uh, techniques are basically this uh, as quantum mechanical treatment of molecules gives you the idea of the different quantum mechanical energies. And we know that there are different quantum numbers starting from principal quantum numbers to magnetic quantum numbers to azimuthal quantum numbers to spin quantum numbers they indicate the different energy levels. So, and uh, as in this case actually quantum mechanical energy levels which are used are rather in IR spectroscopy are basically similar to the molecular vibrations. Now, we perceive this vibration in terms of heat actually. So, that means some kind of heat that is why I showed you some pictures few minutes back where we can image the, the, the animals or even human using infrared spec, uh, camera. When we say a covalent bond between two atoms is of certain lengths, we are citing an average because the bond behaves as there is a vibrating spring connecting between atoms. Let us see the picture here, I have a big atom, the small atom. The bond between these two actually can be thought of is basically like a spring, spring or vibrating spring which is connecting them. So, that means molecules are vibrating in a certain manner, uh, sorry atoms are vibrating in a molecule certain manner, but a simple molecule is a diameter molecule is we can very easily model this kind of situations using this picture. So, uh, if that is the case that means, I know we know that for any spring there is a vibration uh, this frequency which is very unique to the spring. And if we know the vibration frequency we can know the energy and if once you know the energy we can clearly say that if we use the infrared radiations we can energize this spring to the higher energy level and when it comes back to the ground level it will emit the radiation which is absorbed and by that by measuring that we can determine type of bond presence into the into the molecule in the material. So, now uh, you know as I said bonds between the atoms in a molecule can stretch can bend when it absorb infrared energy and that is how actually the infrared uh, the whole plot between the infrared uh, the, the between the absorption or the transmissions versus wavelength can be prepared here. So, to give you some idea this is called systematic stretch, I will show you some even <coughs> nice videos. Systematic stretch means you have suppose oxygen there are two hydrogen atoms this is like water molecule. So, there will be systematic stretch in these two bonds 
oxygen hydrogen bonds. You can have even asymmetric stretch due to application of the infrared like this, these two are different directions of arrows or you can have bend that means you can have basically the hydrogen atoms actually can move little bit or rather vibrate little bit this way and then that can create a bend. So, molecules such as water actually can absorb infrared light when vibration results in a molecular dipole moment change. This is very important as far as the infrared spectroscopy concerned because that is how we can actually utilize this technique to determine what kind of particular you know vibration is present even in the water molecule itself. To give you a better idea let us consider uh, then any kind of you know atomic energy levels at in the atom. These are the ground states or vibrational ground vibrational states you can clearly see these, these are the atoms blue color atoms are stating there and these are the excited states. Now, we apply certain wavelengths of infrared energy what is going to do these atoms which are present here they will absorb this okay. and when they absorb they get to go to the excited state suppose they vibrate from mu 0 nu 0 to mu nu 1 or even if you apply more energies from mu 1 to mu 2. Okay. So, in as the time goes on these atoms which are excited to the mu 1 frequency regime can come back to the ground state and leaving behind infrared radiations. If you pump in more energy these atoms can go into this energy states higher energy excited energy states and even then they can come back. So, when they will come back there will be huge change of energy and that energy will come as a radiations and uh, that is what has been written here absorption uh, basically occurs among the ground vibrational states in the energy difference and the corresponding spectrum determined by the specific molecular vibrations that is what is important. The infrared absorption is net energy gain for the molecule and recorded as energy loss for the analysis beam. So, molecule absorb energy gain the energy because it is absorbing from the infrared input radiation and as a result of which this energy loss in the analysis beam that means the beam which is coming out from the material after interaction will be there will be energy loss that can be determined easily. Yes as I said I will show you some very nice videos. So, as you can clearly see there are different types of stretch and bends stretch this is all taken from Charles and Abrams which is uh, this book classic book by these two authors. As you can clearly see uh, the stretch is basically symmetric where atoms can symmetrically move this is I uh, told let me put you this is suppose carbon atoms and there are 4 hydrogen atoms and I am just putting 2 hydrogen atoms there and here and they are moving symmetrically. So, there is a symmetric stretch this is one kind of vibrations and this vibration will lead to certain kind of energy and vibration frequency also will be defined that is mu 0, mu 1, mu 3, mu 2, epsonium. And uh, if you suppose if these two bonds are moving opposite to each other uh, at a particular time like when this one is moving out this one is moving in. So, because of that there will be asymmetric vibrations that is also possible they are different states of energies. Okay. So, whenever infrared radiation falls on it this that can it can modify this this kind of stretch uh, vibration along the line of the bond. Next one it can modify is the bend. Now, you can have a different kind of bends the one which is shown as is basically in plane bend it can be either scissor type or rocking type scissor type means suppose in this case both the hydrogen atoms are moving in in the same directions. So, therefore, there is a scissor type is you know scissor scissor both the scissor whenever you use a scissor to cut certain things both this uh, you know the scissor pieces they come and meet at the uh, going the same directions other one is called rocking rocking means they are actually moving in the same opposite direction sorry in scissor case these two atoms are moving in the opposite directions not in the same direction that is why they can come in scissor actually they come in opposite directions in a rocking case these two atoms are moving in the opposite directions one is th sorry these two opposite atoms are moving in the same directions because they are moving in the same direction there is a rocking aspects. And this happens in the when the atoms are moving in the same plane. If the atoms are moving in the out of the plane, so the first situations 
in this case like scissor which correspond to twist okay that they will be twisting the bonds second one is called wag that is both the atoms are moving in the same directions so that will lead to wag so you can clearly see that these are all shown here and scissor is this like this and rocking is like this and this is I think uh, twist. So, these situations will lead to different kinds of energy states of the molecule that is what I am trying to impress you upon. So, that you can you can actually use this kind of energy levels to detect the kind of vibration, uh, vibration is present in the molecule that is why it is called vibrational spectroscopy, I IR spectroscopy is always known as a vibrational spectroscopy. To be better give you a better perspectives. I spectroscopy process uh, actually you know as a covalent bond oscillates due to oscillation of the dipole of the molecule okay so these two are actually dipole a varying electromagnetic field is produced and uh, because of that you can see there is a propagation of the radiation and get the dipole moment change to the vibration and the more intense will be the electromagnetic field generated and electromagnetic field means there is vibration. So, that is what is normally basically classically can be used. Now, when a wave of infrared light encounters any oscillating electromagnetic field generated by this dipole of same frequency the two cup waves can couple and then when the two waves couple that means the IR radiation which is coming and the electromagnetic field which is generated by this oscillating dipoles they can couple and when they couple actually this couple wave can vibrate with the double the amplitude of the initial wave. That is what is shown here. So, you can see there are this is the input and this is the because of the electromagnetic field and when they couple you have electromagnetic wave which is very very uh, you know double the amplitude. So, this all can be uh, direct used. So, this is again uh, same things which I told you I am just going to rush you through this. So, these are all vibrations, vibration means stretching of bonds, bending of bonds, internal rotations which I have shown you already and uh, then vibration can change the dipole moment. I have also show, showed you the asymmetrical stretching or bending or I mean internal rotations this wag or uh, can change the dipole moment of molecule. Symmetrical stretching or bending that is not normally, so they are not active to the IR radiation. Now, you know normally the, what is the kind of vibration level. So, wavelengths I have already told you wavelengths should be of the order of 2500 to 17 or 15 to 17 thousand nanometers ok. Now, vibrations if you have vibration of suppose 4111 centimeters inverse that is in stage case of H2 molecule. So, can you imagine how many vibrations can be done in per second it is very very large it can be of the order of 120 to the power 10 to the power 12, 120 into 10 to the power 12 vibration per second. That means one vibration per 10 to the power 15 seconds, which is sometimes is very difficult to detect. That is why you have auto second laser spectroscopy, you can where you can use infrared laser and using auto second laser spectroscopy, you can determine each of these vibration. Auto second means minus 18 second. So, the spectroscopy which is done at that time scale can be used to detect this kind of vibrations which is now a routine nowadays many labs in this even our country has this kind of spectroscopies. So, uh, this is a very large spectroscopy and now I have not told you about one thing this fine this vibration stretching everything is very fundamental to the eye spectroscopy this actually gets influenced by the mass mass of the molecule to give you some idea. Suppose this is a hydrogen molecule, this is the iodine molecule. Hydrogen molecule molecular weight is 2 grams per mole and molecule for the iodine is 254 grams per mole huge, huge, huge molecule mass compared to the hydrogen. Now, if you look at it the idea is get the mass lower the wave number for the for the vibrations to happen. This is also very important you must try to remember this. So, how much is the movement ho happens occurs in a vibration of the C C point now let us look at even this nitty gritty subdetails of that. If I consider this suppose this is 
the one atom carbon atom this is another atom okay. So, if they vibrate approximately what is the you know length to which it can vibrate that is a distance actually distance is approximately 10 picometers and the bond length is about 154 picometers that is what happens. So, for a CC bond with a bond length of 150 54 picometers 1 picometer is to the power minus 12 meter because we know 1 nanometer is 10 to the power minus 9 meter. So, that means if the bond distance is or length is about 154 picometers. So, that means it is equal to almost like 0.15 nanometers. The vibration is even much much lower it is about 10 picometers. So, that is the distance scale I am talking about it. So, that is for the stretching. For the bending what is the bending angle? Well, if we consider the carbon carbon bonds bending angle is maximum 4 degrees. So, this much of bend happens when the molecule when the carbon carbon bonds actually uh, vibrates uh, bends at the 4 degrees uh, and that is means distance about 4 at uh, 10 picometers. For CCC bonds angle is uh, changes about 4 degrees is very difficult and this moves the carbon atom about 10 picometers. So, I will I will not discuss about these aspects because I have already discussed with you about the energy and the wave number and other things. So, uh, let us look at even a big molecule like pentane ok, pentane is C 5 H 10 ok. So, there are 5 carbon atom 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 carbon hydrogen atoms. So, uh, if this is the case then what kind of type of vibration would occur in these big molecules for small molecules it is easy ok. Examine this that can be done using by taking the I spectrum. This is pentane liquid and uh, it is measured using FTIR. You can see this is the absorbance absorption. this is the wave number and this is absorption A plotted here. So, you can see the peaks coming in this picture the background and the peaks coming in the picture certain wave numbers there are small peaks there are big peaks ok. And by looking at this peak positions one can actually easily determine that kind of you know questions which have already asked that vibrations what kind of vibrations will take place in this molecule. So, increasing the absorption of ion radiation that means as you go 0.2 to 1 absorptions what happens C is this is basically C H stretching and this is for so C H stretching and this is for C H bending to separate things because as you have seen here. So, I let like to go back we have carbon. So, this is hydrogen this is carbon this is suppose carbon so, this is carbon hydrogen bond and this is carbon carbon bonds that is the overall picture in a pentane molecule. So, this is saturated uh, what is called saturated uh, polymer ok or alkane rather. And so, therefore, if I look at it uh, this is the CH stretching this particular <coughs> bonds which are coming the CH stretching and this is CH bending and uh, that is what we can clearly see in case of uh, pentane. Now, if you look at chloroform and even deuterochloroform, chloroform is very uh, common molecule this is taken from this source. As you can see the chloroform is basically shown in the, the red and deuterochloroform is shown in blue. So, there are certain frequencies or, or, or the vibrations we can see. So, what you can do is that in a chloroform you know chloroform is nothing but C H C L 3 that means there are 1 H and 3 chlorine bonds C C L C C L C H there are 2 types of bonds. So, C H stretching for chloroform comes around 3002 this is this is almost like this ok this part and uh, C H bending C H bending comes 1120. So, that is this and C C L comes around 700 1900 800 700 yeah 700 
and CCL bending comes for and it in some more hair comes it is sorry hair it can be detected. Similarly for and these are the major values these are normally detected we can we observe we can see these things and for CDCL3 that is deuterochloroform okay these are the values and this we detect all of them. So, therefore, one can actually clearly say from these measurements what kind of you know vibrational states of the bonds present in the in this uh, states. The fixed shift is because of H2D and that is because of mass increase. So, you can see that H2D because of that this peak has shifted, this peak has shifted this. That is what we discussed the mass increase means more mass means the peaks will come at a higher wave numbers. So, lower wave numbers not higher. Some more results. So, uh, you know calculated values normally in these cases are had to be compared with computational values which are normally done using computational tools. So, so calculated values uh, as, we, as I showed you here in this case calculated values are this and these are the measure values. So, there is little bit of variations, but still one can get this results very close to it from the, of the, uh, the measure value with the calculated value using better computational tools nowadays which is done. And second thing is increasing the mass will shift the wave numbers to lower values that is what I told you. And third one stretching energies are always higher than the bending energies that we also learned. And bending energies will be always higher than the rotational internal rotational energies which can occur actually higher wavelengths which is normally observed. So, therefore, does the stretching relationship next question you have to ask is does the stretching relation energy have any relationship with the strength of the bond. Actually it is true indeed true if you look at wave number versus bond energies. So, bond energy is starting from 200 to about 600 kilojoule per mole wave numbers 0 to 5000. As you can see that as the bond energy increases wave number also increases. So, that means stretching energy is related to the strength of the bond. As the bond increases, bond strength increases, the stretching energy also increases. That is what this uh, what is called plot actually suggesting. That is what is the case. So, we can plot it and we can get a very reasonable numbers of the confidence using R square. Well, now we can actually go on looking at different kinds of molecules and do that most of them will be today's lecture will be of carbon type. This is formal dehydrate you know formal dehydrate C H C L 2 ok. And uh, this is phosgene or this is acetone we know that. And uh, so, we will examine this carbonyl groups here. So, how does this C C C O bonds C O double bonds here sorry this one everywhere you have a C O double bond ok. Everywhere you have a C O double bond that is in the all the cases. So, how does this C O stretching energy compare with these molecules? Here actually it is wave number is 2053 in case of phosgen is it is basically 1951 in case of acetone it is even higher 2063 centimeter inverse. So, that means depending on the structure from a aldehyde, phosgene or acetone the CO bond stretching energy will change. That is understand because the environment is changing the, the type of atoms present in the near the CO bonds as it changes the stretching energy also changes. So, carbonyl group normally has energies between 1700 to 3000 centimeter. In. Now, one can actually analyze different functional groups in organic compounds like Atomic, unlike atomic spectroscopy where the sharp energy transition occurred due to well contrast electron transitions molecular spectroscopy strain to bands we have seen that different kinds of stretching bands. Molecular vibrations are normally influenced by this surrounding groups we have seen one example in the last slides. So, uh, let me just tell you in a brief what we can understand from this kind of spectroscopy. This is stretching and bending energies and these are the wave numbers. So, for a CH stretching energy uh, wave number comes around 3000, but bending will come around 1000 to couple of hundreds. OH that is in well groups the stretching energy can span from 4000 to about 2000 where bending energy can span from about 1000 2000 1500 to about 500. 
and then CO, CO is CO means C, C double bond O that is the you know formaldehyde acetone all this molecule has this kind of bonds there this there is the stretching energy can span from 3000 to about 2500 and uh, your what is called the, uh, the another type of the CO actually single bond can happen actually there is this stretching can happen even at lower web number that is 1200 to about 1000 and uh, in these cases there are other things like C C double bonds this alkenes and it can happen in the range of about very close range about 1500 and then we can also also have C C single bonds and this can happen even at much lower wave numbers that is close to 1000. So, using the I spectroscopy actually one can determine these, these kind of bonds. Let us see that what else we can do. So, therefore, we can actually identify different functional groups in the molecule that is very important to organic chemistry because you need to know what kind of functional group is present in the molecule which is produced by the chemical reactions and then only you can basically formulate the structure of the molecule. Special matching can be done by computer software as I told you even library spectroscopic data are also available. Since this, this absorption follows Beer's law, we can actually do quantitative analysis also. I have already discussed to you about Beer's law in first lecture even in case of uh, visible UV visible spectroscopy also how to apply that and uh, one can actually use this law and then do quantitative analysis also. To do that let us see that okay. and this is uh, basically another kind of uh, representation and uh, you know I each uh, I have told all these things already to you but let me reiterate each stretching and bending vibrations actually occurs as very specific uh, characteristic frequencies which uh, we have already told you and as you can see that these are actually where the field of electromagnetic field of oscillations interacts with the IR lights. So, transmission will be very low this is basically transmitting is important here not the absorption passes wave number and region where this acceleration bonds interact with light the transmission is almost like 100 percent this is the ones. So, that means there is uh, no oxidation of bonds. So, there is no transmission. This is again uh, another kind of plots for transmissions versus wave numbers and we can see different bands stretching and the and bending bands we can determine that for different molecules. And to give you some more ideas about it, normally I S spectrums uh, okay uses unit rather than wavelengths because wave numbers are directly proportional to the energies, as we have told, because A is nu is the energy, and this can be written as A C by lambda. So A C nu bar is the energy. Say so where nu bar is basically the wave number. So wave number is directly proportional to the uh, energy not the wavelength, the wavelength is inversely proportional to the energy that is why we plot it. Higher frequency higher numbers are require the higher energy, so short wavelengths require the higher energy that is why we use the wave numbers and wave numbers are extensively used I do not want to tell detail about that. So, okay, let me just well to give you some more idea you know it is important to know that peak intensities actually are tend to be effects of the three factors. One is the peak intensity is very strong, that means peak is very tall and absorption is high, transmission is low. Medium ones, which is peak is mid height, that is not very tall and not very small, also. So, where in which this uh, transmission is very small or you can have a weak, and that means transmission is very high. So, as I if I go back to this plot, I can show you there this is weak this is tall and in some cases you can see medium height here. So, all these these kind of this, this signals are available everywhere Sorry. and broad you can broad also then if the Gaussian distribution is abnormally broad this means actually more of the descending bond that spans have more energies. Exact transmitter values are rarely recorded here. So, that is why although we can apply the 
Beer's law, but it is not uh, you know good to use the exact uh, transmittance to get good uh, results or the quantity results from that. Okay, so, what else the infrared spectroscopy can do? It can actually identify and quantify organic solids, liquid gases, it can analyze powders, solids, gels, emulsions, paste, even the pure liquids or solutions, polymers, and even pure and mixed gases. So, that means it can analyze everything solid, liquid, gas. So, that is why the versatility of this technique so important. It can be used for all kinds of research activities like quality control, quality assurance, even nowadays we actually as a scientist we use to detect different kinds of bonds present. Samples sizes can be single fibers like only 20 microns in lens to even atmospheric pollutants. Nowadays people do lot of study in atmospheric pollutants. So, which can be large. Not only that, it can be used in pharmaceutical research, forensic investigations, polymeric analysis, which I have showed you, lubricant formulations and fuel additives, lubricants which are used nowadays many for the many applications in the machine industry can be studied. Fuel additives, you know, in different fuels we add different kind of additives and whether they are stable in the fuel conditions can be studied that by this way. Food research is extensively used because food uses lot of different kinds of spices where this can be used they are chemicals actually. Quality assurance which I have told you already, environmental pollutions and the water pollutions can be studied by this way. Not only that biochemical research or biomedical research can be done, coatings, surfactants can be studied they are all even either polymeric or even metallic or the ceramic materials many others. Most importantly they are used in the polymers. Well, to give you all these things in nutshell that in general the primary use of air spectroscopy is detect the functional groups, but it can be used because it leads to interaction of the electromagnetic spectrum with the actual bonds. It can provide a qualitative probe of the functionality of the molecule because it can actually give different configurations, it can actually give you different configuration of the molecules present in the, in, the, in the material because one molecule can stretch, bend or maybe it can have different kind of positions or big energy levels so that can be detected. Since most types of the bonds in covalent molecules have roughly the same energies like C C double bond or C O double bonds or C H or C N H single bonds, they show up <coughs> in similar regions of the ion spectrum. And you must remember that all the organic functional groups are made of multiple bonds that will show up in the multiple IR bands that is so how you see a band that means many peaks are there in one bands. And uh, in general so we can actually uh, determine four regions OH, NH, CH single bonds they follow in this range. Triple bond CC, CN, acetylene and the other carbon hydrogen bonds 2005, 700, 2000 double bonds falls 2000 to 1600 and single bonds comes in the small uh, wave numbers they have the higher energy. So, that is yeah, that is you know C C C N or C O they come in the fingerprint regions. So, that is why we use these techniques to determine all kinds of bonds. Mm -hmm.